Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over some mind-blowing Ableton gems that not a lot of people are talking about. We're gonna go over some features and some Max for Live plugins that are gonna change the way you make music and I'm super excited to show it to you. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is the Verbatron. And this is a reverb based off of the Gigaverb algorithm, which was an older Max for Live plugin that was free but it sounds amazing. And this is from the Stray Cats collection, which is a free download. And there is a ton of really dope plugins in here. We're going to look at a couple of the other ones later, but definitely worth a grab if you don't have it. Let's throw this on our melody group. Let's hear what the melody sounds like dry first. Cool. So let's go ahead and throw it on here and we can start tweaking some of the settings. Let's hear what it sounds like right out of the box. What I also like is that it has this wet gain right here because one of the things I love to do in Ableton is I'll go ahead and group an effect and then I'll put the effects on one group and then just have the original signal on another group and that allows me to affect the wet gain so I can dial in it precisely. So having this wet gain allows you to do that without having to group anything. And Ableton does have some good stock reverbs but this one definitely sits in a class of its own. So that is Verbatron. I'm going to leave the links for everything we talk about today in the description below. So let's move on to the next. The next thing we got to take a look at is the save as default preset option in Ableton. If you haven't used this before, this is a game changer. When I load in the EQ8, it's fine as it is, but how nice would it be if this was already cut and ready to go? So that when I put this EQ on my drums, for instance, or melodies, all I have to do is move this and I'm done, right? Just cut out the lows and move on. How nice would that be? So what I can do is I'll go ahead and set up the EQ how I like it. Click on this. We're going to right click and then we're going to go to save as default preset. Boom. Now, when we go ahead and open up EQ8, it should be loaded exactly how we set it. Boom, and now you can see it loads up instead of the default. So you can use this on all of the stock Ableton plugins. And bro, if there's any settings that you love to use, this is a huge time saver. It's gonna go exactly how you want it out of the box. One thing that's similar to that for other plugins is you can see this Effectrix right here. And one thing we talked about in the last episode was setting these X and Y values because you can do some really, really dope stuff with that. And if you haven't seen that episode next and you want to check it out, I'll leave a link at the top of the video. Definitely check that one out next. But when you set these X and Y parameters right here by clicking this and configuring them, what you can do is you can actually, let's close this, we can right click this and we can go ahead and save this as a default configuration. Now what it's going to do is every time you load in Effectrix or whatever plugin you put this on, all of these things that you went ahead and configured are going to show up for you automatically. So super gem. Another amazing plugin that we have to talk about is the Scram Delay. And again, this is in that Stray Cats collection, so another free plugin. If we go ahead and load in the Scram Delay, so it gives you these two different channels right here that you can feed delays through, and it allows you to come up with some really crazy experimental stuff. And actually, let's try out some of their presets because they always provide really nice presets with these. <laughs> That one makes it sound metallic. But let's go ahead and load in a fresh one. You can hear it coming out of the left ear right now, and you can also mess with the panning. And then once we start turning up this randomization, That's when you start getting these glitchy, crazy effects like that. So we're going to go ahead and make an audio track right here. We're going to set this to resampling. And now we're going to arm it. And I'm going to go ahead and solo this and the melodies, okay? We gotta talk about circuit types, and these are way more important than you think. 
These are analog modeled filters that can help you get all kinds of effects, including analog distortion and warmth with your drum samples. Let's check this out. I'm going to go ahead and pick out a kick drum. We'll just go ahead and pull this one in from the Detroit kit. And now when we go down here, you can see there are different filter types that we can choose from. And they each give you a little bit different of effects. Select from five circuit types. Clean matches the filters found in EQ8. OSR is a state variable circuit with hard clipping. MS2 is a sale and key circuit with soft clipping. SMP is a hybrid between the both of them. And PRD is a ladder circuit without resonance limiting. So each one of these gives you a little bit different different results we got hard clipping soft clipping and all that goodness so we'll go ahead and choose ms2 and what i really love is when you go ahead and change it from the clean filter you also get this drive knob which adds gain but it boosts the harmonics in a subtle distortion sort of a way and it sounds really amazing on kicks 808s anything you put it on just about so let's check out this kick and we'll go ahead and start boosting this drive And if we go ahead and change the mode, you're going to notice it's either going to start limiting it, hard clipping, soft clipping. It's going to do a little bit something different to each of the channels. Next, we got to take a look at color. And this is the Ableton equivalent of RC20. This thing is fire, fam. So if you don't have RC20, this is a free option. It's that freaking good. So let's go ahead and just throw this onto our melody group here. And when we look at this, you can see we have access to a vinyl sort of a sound, an aging effect, and all kinds of stuff. You have a wobble effect that you can add, some phasing, drive, and an EQ as well. So let's see what this sounds like right out of the box. Dang, that's good. Let's turn down the vinyl though. But we can also try out some of the presets. If we go ahead and click this, we can swap them out very easily. Go into the colored presets, and then you got a ton of stuff that they already came up with for us. You don't even need RC20 anymore. This has you covered. Psst. Have you heard the news? We've actually just opened up our VIP group to the public again, and we're allowing a few more members to join. This group offers so much, but one of the main things is the monthly producer care packages where you're getting sent the newest and hottest drum sounds, samples, and kits every single month so that you're always up to date and you're never using old boring sounds ever again. All of our members are absolutely loving it and we want you to join us as well. So go ahead and click the link in the description below and we'll see you in there. We got to talk about the Concord Step Sequencer and this thing is an absolute beast. Before we dive into it, I just want to tell you that the reverb in this song was made using only that and then a couple other plugins like reverbs and stuff like that. But check out how it sounds. This is the melody. Here's Concord, and this is a MIDI effect, so you gotta apply it to a MIDI channel. Now, if you want to use this on some drums, you could load in a drum rack, and then it can affect the different drums in that rack if you want to use it that way. I actually use this on an Omnisphere piano preset. So if we just press play right out of the box, we have a piano loaded in. You're gonna see it's just gonna play all of the notes on zero, which is going to be C. So we can go ahead and change that. Let's try this out. Not only can you do that, we also have octaves right here. You can also mess with the velocity for each of these notes, so you can actually make it sound sort of humanistic by doing that. And you also have length right here, so the length of the note being played. And that's just the first menu. So you see that we have four different menus over here. The next one is stage. And this allows you to get absolutely crazy with it. You can actually set different modes and divisions. If you think about this in terms of bars or quarter bars, you can actually get into the nitty gritties and play with this. 
let's go ahead and jump into the next one which is the chord here and you can see we can actually make different chords now if you want to turn it on or off you're obviously going to play here and you can see this chord right here will change when you go up or down with it you You even have control over the different inversions of each of these chords that you set all the way up till four and you can actually strum them as well by picking different strumming modes and if we go down into the extras tab you see we can pick our note scale we can go ahead and switch up these again from here. We have different map values and smoothing, and you can get a little more control over everything here as well. And to spice it up even more, you have different modes. You can play this thing backwards if you want, forwards and backwards, and you even have a star. What does that do? I think it's randomized. Yeah, completely randomized. So you might not use that one in general, but being able to play that backwards is pretty dope. But besides that one, man, thank you guys so much for watching this all the way to the end. If you guys want to see the last episode, we covered a lot of dope features that you guys need to know. So definitely check this out next and I'll be catching you guys again soon. Peace.